Hello, welcome back to my videos about Jupyter Notebooks on the Red Retire. I'm John, I'm at your radio call sign M0JPI, and I'm going to talk about ways that you can collect data and interface with hardware using the Red Retire and Jupyter Notebooks. This video is part of a series. If you want to know more about Jupyter Notebooks and the Red Retire, then you can click on the link above or in the description below and look at the playlist about my other videos for the Jupyter Notebook. Once you've opened Jupyter Notebooks, it, my example is its own separate notebook. It's not part of the standard install. You can get my example from my GitHub, which is linked in the video description below. So for me, it's in my notebooks. So you don't have to use my examples if you don't want to. You could type them in as I'm going along with the video. That's another option. Another thing that I've did is I've used the beta version of the SD card image because the beta card version gives you this data stream application. This allows you to save your inputs to either a local file on the SD card uh, or over the TCP IP network to another device. Uh, without this, um, it just uses the memory inside the FPGA. So this beta version can be got from redpatire.vthedocs.io, which has got loads of other information about um, using all the different applications and developing your own applications and teaching examples as well. It's got all the latest versions, the stable and the beta version of the SD card. Presumably in future stable versions, the stream server will be part of the SD card image. So if we go into Jupyter Notebooks, I open up my example in my notebooks, and then I'm using the analog to digital converter to read in some sound. So with Jupyter Notebooks, there's two types of cells. You can either have these markdown cells and you can render them by holding down control and enter. Or you can have these code cells. And if you press control and enter on those, it actually runs the code. And you can see over here, the system's running and it's finished. And then this is the cell that ran first. You don't have to run these cells from top to bottom. So this line number gives you an order at which they ran. I am using the oscilloscope program that's built into the Mercury overlay for this example. So I'm going to set up an oscilloscope. And then here I'm setting the oscilloscope to be a quite a low number of samples and to use the full buffer. And then when I run, run this one, it'll record the data and it'll just save it into the memory of the FPGA. I'm not yet using the streaming server. That will come later on in the example. So press control and enter. So this is a test using the audio for the web tire. I get a print output here when it's complete. And then I can convert this into a sound file using the display library. Again, press Control and Enter, and I get a sound file which I can play. This is a test using the audio for the web file. And I can also download it as well if I wanted to. Because it's in Python, you can actually make a plot of it. So if I hold down control and enter, and we get a plot on the time domain of the waveform. So this has been scaled from zero to one volt. And that's what I used the potentiometer for, to get me in the middle of this range. If you had better signal processing, you could probably get better sound quality and get rid of some of the DC offset as well. 
Now, in the next example, I used a streaming server. So this gives us a more complicated um, example using a file for input rather than just reading it direct. If you want to see my quick audio setup, I'm sorry, it's not very neat, but I'm just using the microphone on the Kitronic Halo HD board. It's actually got a built-in MEMS microphone. So I'm just connecting one side to the output from the microphone, one side to the ground. The um, ground connection on the oscilloscope probe is connected to the ground. And then on the um, other end, I'm using a potentiometer just to set the voltage. And so I can adjust this so that when I talk, the loudest I'm at is about one volt. That allows me um, to put the input into what the Vepatire expects. So on the settings, on the jumper settings here, I've set it to the low voltage setting. That allows one, one volt maximum. And that's my simple setup. I'm sure I could have done this uh, a bit neater, but uh, this is the best microphone amplifier that I, I could find that was uh, on my desk. So that's what I used. Uh, it's got the console cable and the power cable, and then I'm connecting by Ethernet. That's my setup. So to set up or change the Vepatire, I use the Linux console. There's two ways of getting to the Linux console. You can either use the USB connection and the console port for that, or you can use what I'm doing, which is SSH, and you can use the Ethernet connection on the board, or you can plug in a Wi-Fi dongle into the USB port and use it over Wi-Fi. It's a standard Linux command line, and it uses Ubuntu, as you can see here at the top. Um, first of all, when I'm on the command line, I update the system. So this command checks all the uh, package repositories. So it's mainly Ubuntu, but we've also got a repository here from Repertire themselves as well. So we get an updated package list, and then I can upgrade the system, check if any of them need upgrading. Now I do this regularly, so none of them need upgrading today. Uh, this version is the beta version because I wanted to use the streaming server on the beta version. Um, if you're watching this video where the streaming server is part of the stable release, then you could use that. So in my audio example, the first thing that I need to set up is uh, collect my library. From, so there's two ways of installing software. You can either use the apt-get system, like I did to do the update, or for Python libraries, you can use pip, which is what I'm going to use. Pip can be slower for some libraries, but the audio library I'm using is quite quick to install. PyDub is the library that I'm installing, and uh, this isn't sped up, this is doing it in real time. As I say, some of the libraries are quite slow, but in my case, uh, this one is fairly quick to install. It is recommending that we install upgrade pip, but you don't have to do that, and it does take quite a long time to upgrade pip. The other library that I'm going to install is FFmpeg, just so I can get MP3s and various audio features. Um, this wants to install a lot of other packages. This is in real time, it's not sped up, it's quite quick. Some of the installs on the Vepatire take a while, but in this case, um, these are quite small packages, although there's quite a lot of them, it doesn't take that long to install. Um, it'll partly depend on your internet connection but as you can see, they're not very many megabytes of data. You can do this while Jupyter Notebooks are open. So you don't need to reload your Jupyter Notebooks. Um, it'll all carry on as before. 
Uh, if you're interested in the Linux packages, it is important to note that we are using the ARM hard float libraries for this. So it's not the same as um, an Intel or an AMD CPU, and it is the 32-bit ARM processors that we're using the um, the processor inside the web attire is a core Cortex A9, where it's dual core. So this will install all sorts of audio libraries and audio functions into your web attire system. That's it, done. So now we're ready to use this inside Jupyter Notebooks. If you want to install my notebooks onto your web attire, you can do using the Linux command line. You can use git clone and then just paste in my GitHub repository and it will copy all the data into your web attire. So this is my GitHub repository. And I've got my Jupyter Notebooks in the Jupyter Notebooks folder. It's also got some data in there as well. So you can copy these notebooks over into uh, where Jupyter Notebooks live on the web tile, which is inside the Jupyter home directory. So you can copy them with just CP for copy everything into slash home slash Jupyter and then red pattaya. Um, oh, before you copy it, it might be worth making a um, directory. So if I make a directory inside home Jupyter red pattaya, which is where all the data and examples live, I'm gonna call it my hyphen notebooks. I've now got a directory to put it. Then we can copy the data. So copy everything in here into the directory we just made. That will copy everything in. And then when you go into Jupyter Notebooks, you'll be able to see my examples. So if we go back to the home page of the web attire, we can then open up the data streaming application, set it to local, and then you can ignore these network settings. I'm going to set it to channel 2 because that's where I've got my audio connected. Um, I'm going to set it to 8-bit. It does support 16-bit, but I've only got the 14-bit STEM lab um, connected today. So I'm going to leave it at 8-bit. And if we go back to the example, I'm going to collect our sample weight, which I think was the same as the last time. I just copy that and then I can paste that into here. And then when I press run, so it's now saving the data. It, this will be the same whether it's audio data or any kind of data that's coming into the fast analog and digital converters, um, analog to digital converters. It's saving this to my local file on the SD card. Or if you were setting it via TCP IP, it would be going over a network. So press stop, that's collected my data. If you press browse, you can actually see the data it's collected. So it has WAV file and it also has a log file that shows you information about the data as well. You can copy the location and you can paste this back into the example. Now, if we just make another cell, if you press B when you've got a cell highlighted, it'll make another cell for you. This is what happens when you copy the location. Now, inside the Linux file structure, this is the directory that it saves the data to. So what I'm going to do is copy just a file, paste it over my example file name, and then if you press D twice, it will delete the extra cell. And then if I press Control and Enter, it will convert that into a file that I can display. Now. What's happened here is it's actually ignored. This, it's, it's part of the streaming program. This is probably why it's in beta. It's actually ignored the rate that I'm saving the data. 
And so when I play it, it won't play at the right time. So it's now finding the data. It, this would be the same whether it's audio data or any kind of data that's coming into the fast analog and digital converters. So what we can do is we can use NumPy and PyDub, which we've just installed, to get rid of that data out of the data file. That's read it into a NumPy array. And then we can copy the file name. So I'm going to copy it from there. So we made a function to read in the file into NumPy array, and now we'll execute the function. That's done that. And then we can convert it into a displayable audio file, and it will be at the right speed. So it's now saving data. This would be the same as audio data or any kind of data that's coming into the fast analog and digital converters. Um, analog to digital converters. So that's my example of reading in data. It doesn't have to be audio data. I just used audio data because it was familiar to me and it's easier to deal with. But if you wanted to use anything up to 50 megahertz that the Repertire can deal with on the analog digital converters, you can also use Python and these Jupyter notebooks to produce an output as well, and it also works on the logic analyzer as well. Before we go, you get an interesting error here. Uh, requested entity is too large. What that means is it can't auto save this because we've got big data files, in our case the audio, as part of the notebook. We can go, so you could go to all outputs and then clear all output, or you can go to kernel and restart and clear the outputs. Either of those two options will clear your outputs. And then if you go to either file and save in checkpoint, or you can go to control and S on the keyboard, and it will save the checkpoint because the data is not part of the notebook anymore. So that's a good way of saving the notebook if you get a problem with the data being too big. So I hope you like this video. I'm going to try and do more videos about the Jupyter Notebook and Red Pattaya. So if you want to see more, please like and subscribe to this video. And you can check out the rest of the videos on Jupyter Notebook on my playlist.